Okay, school may be out for the summer, but the learning continues. So grab a pen and paper this morning because it's time for Know Your Dough brought to you by TVFCU. And we are very happy to have Jake Cash back on the show. He's with the credit union and he has brought with him the man to listen to this morning. Not that you're not, Jake. <laughs> this is Dr. Andrew Holsauer, who is an associate professor at UTC of finance. Do I have that right? Uh, you do. I'm, I'm Dr. Holsauer. So our topic this morning that I'm going to take notes on as well mm -hmm. is you're talking about, it sounds like, the psychological nature of how we spend our money and how that costs us money in the long run because we all have biases coming Correct. into our money management. Right, we do. And um, I mean, these are all patterns of irrational you know, thoughts and behaviors that are present in anyone. Um, and you know, things like overconfidence, regret, uh, short-term attention spans, um, you know, if you want to think about uh, chasing trends, for example, that'd be mm -hmm. a good one. Um, in fact, there was a recent report by CNBC that pointed out that 98% of Americans have at least one behavioral bias that is costing them money. Okay, so here you are as a professor. Most of your students mm -hmm. are 18 to 22. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have one type of bias, probably. Right. Right. Uh, I'm in my mid-50s. I may have a different type of bias, but I still probably have one. Right. So this lesson is good for everybody. Oh, that abso has a, absolutely. Yeah. If you have mm -hmm. money, you need to hear it. Absolutely. Yeah. So you mentioned overconfidence. What does that mean? Overconfidence is probably one of the big ones uh, as far as, you know, the dozens of behavioral biases there are. Um, overconfidence is really just our tendency to overestimate our own abilities and beliefs uh, and information sources and things like that. So um, I, I give you some common examples. Okay. Um, most people tend to believe that they are better than the average driver. Uh, most people think that, most parents tend to think that their kids are better uh, than the average student. Well, of course. But, you know, on, <laughs> on average, everybody can't be better st statistically than, than the average, right? Okay. So we are all kind of overconfident in those areas when it comes to our kids and our driving abilities. Um, in general, Americans tend to think they're more overconfident than, uh, than people in other parts of the world. So how does that connect the dots then to our money? I'll give you a good example. Um, men might not like this, but uh, uh, men tend to be more overconfident than women, and there's some evidence that shows that women um, tend to outperform men in investing. And one of the main reasons could be overconfidence and that men may be taking too many unnecessary trades, and all of those oh, trades okay. and those fees, they, they add up over time. Do you want it a piece of paper of, to jot some notes down on, Jake? Yeah, you know? right? Well, <laughs> it can kind of work the other way, too, right? Where it's like if you have made a bad investment and you're, make it, you're taking that loss, mm -hmm. you might hold on to that and continually take that loss to think like, no, like I'm a good investor, I made a good investment, it'll mm -hmm. go back up instead of getting out after just a small loss, right? Mm -hmm. So overconfidence can work both ways. That makes sense that, to me. That's mm -hmm. a good example. That's called the disposition effect. And uh, there you go. yeah, and so that's the tendency to either um, sell an investment that's gone up, but sell it too quickly because you want to claim that victory, you want to be the winner, mm. or to delay uh, selling something that's gone down because you don't want to acknowledge the loss, you mm -hmm. don't want to be the loser. Mm -hmm. And actually, the golden rules of investment say you should do it the opposite, that you should you know, sell, sell your losses and let your profits run. Do some people have a hard time admitting that they don't know what they think they should know, like getting financial advice from an expert, is that hard for people? Oh, absolutely, and uh, we'll get to uh, some of that when I ask about, you know, remind people to ask for help, but uh, I think that um, money's kind of sacred to a lot of people, and to, and to some people, they, they don't want to acknowledge that they don't know what they're doing, um, but I've always believed that they're, just like you need a health advisor or maybe a religious advisor, you really need a personal mm -hmm. uh, financial advisor as well, um, a lot of your relationships, especially like your marriages and things like that, the big problems, the, the divorces, the things like that, uh, a lot of the roots of that come back to financial issues. Yeah, it's easy to be happy when your money's working for you. Right. It's hard when you've got two cents in your it, pocket. It definitely makes it easier. Yeah. That's, that's We've right. all probably experienced both at some yeah. point in yeah. our life. Um, you, talking about the trends, mm -hmm. so I'm going to go back again to the people who were in your classroom. They're right. the TikTok followers out there. Right. That will be a trend, right, that they're Absolutely. seeing. Uh, yeah. You can kind of throw money away uh -huh. on these trends, but it happens deep into adulthood too. Oh yeah, well I mean, group think and herding has been around for forever. We've all 
at some point in our life probably follow the crowd too blindly. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, in finance, I mean, you go back to the 1600s, you can think of the tulip mania where people were buying tulip bulbs for no reason. Uh, more recently, though, you've, got, you've had the dot-com crash mm -hmm. right at the turn of the century. You've had the, um, uh, the housing crisis with the 2008 recession. And now you have this kind of fear of missing out, or FOMO, as my students say, uh, which is the tendency to get hyper-focused on the current trends, which could be cryptocurrencies or mm -hmm. non-fungible tokens. Mm -hmm. And so, if, I mean, I'm not saying you can't make money doing that. I'm just saying some people are doing it without even knowing what they're getting into. Okay, I'll tell you a fear of missing out that I hear too, not so much what you're talking about, but that for so long, the teaching that you would give to your kids was get a job, save your money, work hard, prepare for retirement, live your life. Mm -hmm. And now I think that fear of missing out is, what if that day doesn't come for me? I don't want to be delaying my enjoyment for a day that I might not see. Oh, do yeah. you see that too? Oh yeah, and I do think you gotta strike a balance. I mean, uh, there, there, you don't want to delay so much that you die with a whole lot of money. And I mean, I think a lot of people want to slide in the grave with a penny in their pocket, yeah. which is this idea that you lived a full life um, I think that it, it comes down to understanding your own behavioral biases and figuring out what's most important for you and then, you know, having some um, budgeting and savings plans that get you there. Right. And there are plenty of real professionals that can help you accomplish those goals. So with the credit union, I mean, y'all have enjoyed bringing us these segments because Absolutely. it's just good information for us to know, but you are a little bit of a one-stop shop for a lot of this because you have so many departments. That Absolutely. That's a great point. Anyone in any of our departments, consumer lending, mortgage lending, even just the people on stream with you mm -hmm. are very knowledgeable and very friendly and they can help you make some of those personal investment decisions. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we talked about a little bit was diversifying the sort of things that you invest in. So some of that would be investments with your financial institutions, your CDs, high yield savings accounts, things like that. When mm -hmm. then you also want to invest in the market externally. Um, but lots of people at the credit union can help you with that sort of thing. We do financial education as well. So you can check Check us out at our website for that. There's a, a guest who comes on the show. His name is Kevin First and uh, with First Financial. And his phrase is, you have to watch a thing to know a thing. Oh. So his point is, it's very important mm -hmm. to really see where your money is, how it's being spent. Right. We mm -hmm. live in a very busy world. Do you talk to mm -hmm. your kids about that? Absolutely. I tell them if you don't believe you have an information advantage, meaning that you don't particularly think you've worked hard enough or figured something out about a, uh, an idea or an investment that maybe the market doesn't know, then you want to be diversified, right? You don't mm -hmm. want to put all your eggs in one basket. Absolutely. Uh, there's people that spend their entire lives learning about different types of investments. The idea that you're going to be some kind of keyboard warrior that, you know, uh, you know that's going to beat some uh, professional to a specific investment is very unlikely. The Warren Buffett way works, but Warren Buffett does a ton of work before he makes right. his decisions. I've got about a minute left, not quite. Are you offering a new personal finance course at the university? We are. Um, we have, in the, there's a general education uh, curriculum at UTC. And so any student, or if you know a you know, prospective student uh, or potential student at UTC, please let them know we have a new personal finance course. And we also have a relatively new personal finance minor that all students at UTC should consider as well. They're all gonna have to face it. Yeah, they're all going to become employed and need to manage that money. So oh, really. thanks, Jake, for bringing this our way. Absolutely. Thanks for having us on today. You can find out more about the credit union and what they have to offer you at tbfcu.com. And then if you're interested in that personal finance class at UTC, uh, just give them a call even if you want to, and they'll transfer you to the right department. Sounds good. Thank you Thank for you. the notes this morning. I appreciate it.